Hey everyone, welcome to Princess of Gay. I'm your host, Gandhi, and today we are here with episode 5 of Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Uh, yeah. I... I was originally going to do something else today, but I decided to go with this because it's shorter. Because I ended up doing, like, a surprise reaction today that I wasn't expecting. Um, so I kind of changed my plans. Um... Uh, basically I was expecting to do Last Man today, and it's just I decided against, I decided to change my plans to this instead. I do need to get to more Last Man, though, so we will be getting to that as soon as we can, uh, probably next week, uh, beginning of next week, but still. Uh, if I'm feeling up to it, as always, of course, but anyway, uh, I've been really enjoying the shit out of this series. The last episode was really good. With our uh, non-binary uh, AI friend. <laughs> AI is taking over the world. But at least they use they them pronouns. So I, I just, I, I really liked the last episode. I liked the themes and ideas behind it as well. And I'm just really enjoying this. Uh, plus, you know, it, it, each episode just continues to prove more and more that Casey is best girl. Easily. Just outstandingly so. It's it's not even a question to me. <laughs> and it's not entirely a surprise. It's actually pretty rare for me to like the main character the most. Usually I like the one of the sidekick or supporting cast characters, whatever however you want to word it. Um like for Owl House, Amity is my favorite. Amphibia, my favorite is Sasha. Ghost and Molly McGee, it's uh Libby. It's like usually the side characters tend to be more interesting to me or or just more entertaining and it's like it's not to say i don't like the main characters because in all those shows that i mentioned i very much do and i very much like uh moon girl in this uh lunella but casey is just casey is just exactly my kind of character she's fun she's entertaining she's sassy she's a good friend she has heart she is very determined also she has gay dads and that is a big thumbs up for me <laughs> um and she she likes to seem to try to get them into shape apparently um casey's just just amazing she's just she's just awesome i i, I absolutely adore her um and hopefully she continues to be. But I'm liking all the characters so far. I like Lunella and her family. I like Devil. Um, even the villains we're getting so far. I, I would say none of the villains since episode one have been as good. The the uh, li live wire like character from episode one was just so damn good as a villain. And none of the others yet have really stood up to that. Have really given her a fair shake. At, at, at competition but they have they've all still been enjoyable even the troll like even though he wasn't actually a villain he was just a kid who was taken over by a alien symbiote uh which is still very fascinating um even he was still uh, like as the troll a good villain um he, he was still very enjoyable and entertaining which is surprising like i said though because he's supposed to kind of be annoying and, and, and unenjoyable, like, that's kind of the point, but I, I actually did find him enjoyable as a villain. He was funny and interesting, and I, I very much got the joke. Uh, so yeah, I'm just excited to continue to see where this goes. So, let's just get this going and hope for the best. <laughs> when the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts, and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So...
I'm clearly white. And this is something I, I've talked about a lot, how I can't speak to a black person's experience. It's not my place. It's not my right to do so. I don't know what natural black hair is like outside of what I hear from black people and their experiences. This is my natural hair. This is how it grows. Unfortunately, it doesn't get too much longer than this. I really wish it did. Um, but this is this is my hair. It, it, there's a, some slight curlage to it, but not a lot. And, and it's it's very much a white person's hair. Um, and I can speak to troubles I have with it, and to some degree, that could be because I don't take care of it enough. That's possible. That's probable. <laughs> um, knowing me, very probable. <laughs> um, but this is something I've heard from a lot of people, whether friends or just stories online. Wasn't there like an animated short that came out about this very topic about like a uh, single father learning how to uh, style black natural black girl hair? Like, wasn't there an animated short about that? Um, but this this is a topic I've heard people talk about. People who would know more about that. It's definitely a situation that has come up, it just as has the issue of non-black people not understanding natural black hair and even insulting it. And I think that people who do that are fucking dumb. Like, one, why? Does it make you feel good to do that? Because if it does, one, you're a fucking psychopath. If someone else's pain, if making fun of their hair makes you feel good, you're just an asshole. But also, it's like, seriously, what's the point of doing that? It doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything positive for you to mock someone else's hair. And it's not going to change anything. Natural black hair is absolutely beautiful and is absolutely just as respectable and just as great looking as anyone's hair. The great thing about diversity in people is that not only do we all just generally look different and act different and are different, but we can style that and change that as we please. Whether it be through clothes, interests, um, a lot of different ways. And yeah, that includes hair. We can try out different styles and different ways of keeping our hair. I've had my hair dyed in the past. I've had it blonde. I've had it uh, more of a like purple color. <laughs> uh, right now, it's my natural color. A very, very dark brown. <laughs> uh, almost to the level of black. It's... Uh, it's not my favorite way to have it, but yeah. And I've sometimes I've had my bangs down to where I've had a fringe there. Currently, I don't have that. I just uh, brush or comb my hair to the sides and like kind of part it down the middle usually. Um, that's how I wear my hair currently. A lot of the times I wear it back in a ponytail. In fact, lately a lot I've worn it back in a ponytail because it's just easier to manage that way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's like, you can do whatever you want with your hair and all kinds of different hairstyles and everything are perfectly valid. And that includes natural black hair. That especially includes that. And you know that this episode, just like that one animated short, you know this is going to speak to a lot of kids who probably have these self-image issues because of it. You know it's going to speak to a lot of adults even who, who have gone through this kind of thing and who understand this kind of thing. And again, I can't speak to these kinds of experiences because I don't have them. Because I'm a white 
trans woman. I, I don't have that kind of hair. But I can still understand and acknowledge how important this is for those that it does affect. This episode was brilliant. It was brilliant. It was wonderful. It had a great message about self-love and respect. It was absolutely fantastic. This series just continues to impress me. And I hope we continue to get more shows like this in the future, but also I hope that shows like this continue to get the attention they deserve. deserve. Unfortunately, Disney and a lot of these other studios tend to fuck over these kinds of shows. Like, you notice, I don't know if people have noticed, this show is not getting the attention it deserves. A lot of people don't even know it exists. Compared to something like The Owl House and Amphibia, those were a lot better uh, handled at first. Even though uh, Owl House was fucked over in the end, it was still advertised really well at the beginning. But th now you have shows like The Ghost of Miley McGee and, and Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur, both of which are being, honestly, really fucking poorly advertised. Not only that, the shows are being relegated to mass batch releases on the app, which just hurts the overall viewership. People see this as a gimmick show or something rather than anything else, rather than an actual series with just as much quality as, stu as stuff like Amphibia and Owl House. This show and Ghost of Molly McGee both deserve that same level of praise that those other two shows got. But they're not getting it because of stupid shit like this. Of the stupid advertising that just ruins it. And it really sucks because the fan bases that these shows do have are extremely passionate. I've seen the fans I've seen talk about both of these shows are really into these shows and, and will very much make it clear and kind of like I'm doing now. <laughs> um, the Ghost of Mal McGee fandom is really passionate about the Ghost of Mal McGee and all the characters within, and same with this one. And I just wish that they got more mainstream attention like Owl House and Amphibia did. It's it's just really a shame. It really is. Because all four of these shows are, ha have lead, leading characters who are people of color with experiences and ideals and whatnot that allow us to just expand our our views on things. It allows us to see what other cultures are like and allows us to see just as much value in them as our own. Whether that be Thai culture, black culture, whatever it be these cultures are important for us to learn about and to just respect that's still unfortunately a really hard thing for a lot of people to do and it irritates me it really shouldn't be an issue in 2023 but it is because there are some people out there who are just so determined to be bigots and are actively choosing to spread those draconian beliefs to others. And you know how people are. Humanity is just full of sheep who will just latch on to anything they're told and just accept it. And I'm speaking as someone who's had that issue, so... 
That one I can speak to because I've done the same thing. I have made that mistake. And luckily I've worked to stop making that mistake as much as possible, but it still happens every now and again. Because we just want to believe what people tell us. We want to have faith that they're telling us the truth or that they're being fair with us when that's not always the case. A lot of times it's not. As a villain in this episode, going back to the actual topic at hand, uh, Maine was not the most entertaining, but I would say she is the best since episode one. Um, just because of, again, the meaning and depth behind the episode and the fact that Maine was never actually evil. And it was honestly pretty clear early on that she wasn't actually evil, that she did want revenge on Lunella. Uh, Casey was great in this as well. I love the fucking poster or whatever that is on her wall. Oh my God. It, like that, that's just, that was everything to me. And you, you saw, I had to actually go back to that to make sure I saw that right. I just, I love that shit. Just casual, um, Ca casual representation thrown in there um just because it's awesome and you know very casually handled just like the thing with casey's dad's being revealed as her dad's was handled um it was just super normalized and that's beautiful and wonderful and awesome as i said in my pride 2023 uh special for given the movie i love it when that stuff happens in media because um, that's how it should be. It should be normalized like that. Unfortunately, it's not. And I'm kind of wondering if we're going to get an episode on that. I could see this show doing that, giving us a full episode on the LGBTQ plus community. And focusing especially on Casey and her dads. That would be an amazing episode. And like... This show's already won me over, but that would do a lot for me, <laughs> um, for sure. Uh, I just, I'm continuing to adore this series. It, it has so much potential to continue being this amazing and even better. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. So... Let me know down in the comments below what did you think of this episode of uh, Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. And for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.